Over 8 million Americans lost their jobs, and more than 3.1 million homes were foreclosed. Hey guys, it's Chris today. We're diving into the 2008 financial crisis. Examining the events leading up to its eruption and assessing its lasting impact on the worldwide economy. Stay with us till the end as we unravel this crucial chapter in economic history. If you find this video interesting, it would be great if you could support us by hitting the like button. Now, let's get started. To truly understand the 2008 financial crisis, we first need to paint a broader picture of what unfolded. Essentially, the crisis was largely a result of an economic bubble bursting in the United States, which was mainly focused on the housing market. The sudden collapse of housing prices led to the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers. A significant player among the world's leading investment banks, the ripple effect of this bankruptcy spread shockwaves across the entire global economy. However, summarizing this event as merely the collapse of Lehman Brothers, doesn't accurately capture the full scope. The reality is much more complex. It was not merely the story of a large corporation's failure and the subsequent economic turmoil instead. It involved a complicated web of factors and decisions that culminated in the worldwide crisis. The crisis began unfolding around September-October 2008. Its colossal magnitude meant it impacted the global economy significantly. The effects lingered for more than a year. In the United States, the epicenter of the world economy, stock prices witnessed a drastic fall, approximately 30 in the first month and a further 40 in the second month. The unemployment rate rocketed up to an alarming 10. The ramifications of the crisis were global, not limited to the United States. Countries like Japan, one of the world's most robust economies, faced even harsher consequences. In 2009, when the aftermath of the global financial crisis was in full swing, Japan saw its economic growth rate plummet to negative 5.4%. This was far worse than the negative 2.5% witnessed in the United States. From 2008 to 2009, numerous businesses filed for bankruptcy across the nation, and an array of social issues emerged including job offers being withdrawn and temporary staff cuts. This crisis starkly brought to light how a problem in one major country could rapidly spread and destabilize the global economic landscape due to increasing globalization. So what precipitated this catastrophic event? The root cause lay in the United States housing bubble. A mortgage is a loan issued by a bank or other institution to a person looking to build a house. But due to the substantial nature of the amount, banks couldn't easily approve these loans without thorough checks. The bank needed to ensure the borrower could repay the loan without defaulting. Therefore, banks screened borrowers based on their ability to repay. Considering factors like stable income and employment status, this is where the scenario started getting complicated. In the 2000s, there was an increasing popularity of subprime mortgage loans in the United States. These loans were offered to low-income earners with poor credit scores. This development was somewhat peculiar given the premise of a mortgage loan, that the borrower must have a stable income and an ability to repay. However, what was propping up? These subprime loans was the consistent and sharp rise in housing prices. During that period in the United States, housing prices were increasing year after year. For instance, a house bought for $100,000 would rise to a valuation of $120,000 a few years later. With such a trend in play, even if you lent money to low-income individuals with a doubtful repayment capability, the high valuation of the house acted as a safety net. If the borrower defaulted, selling the collateral house would still return the loaned money. One aspect that exacerbated the situation was the trading of the rights to have the loan repaid. For example, if a mortgage loan of $100,000 was issued, the bank would acquire the rights to receive $110,000, which included the interest. This right to have the loaned money returned, referred to as a bond, was sold off to third parties. 
This practice meant more and more low-income individuals were given loans, and the mortgage companies then sold the acquired rights to these loans to third parties. Subprime loans, which originally carried high interest rates, were inherently high-risk, high-return products, but they were marketed as low-risk, high-return products under the false assumption of continuously rising housing prices. As a result, these products were sold in vast quantities. Investment banks played a crucial role in this process. They are elite groups that provide financial advice to large corporations, among other duties. Some investment banks began creating their own investment products. These institutions started combining the rights to receive repayments from subprime loans with safer investment packages and then selling them off. For example, they mixed these rights with corporate bonds issued by blue chip companies such as Microsoft and Toyota and other really safe mortgage bonds with little risk. This practice caused the repercussions of the impending crisis to spread across investment. Banks and corporations around the world. Nevertheless, as long as housing prices in the United States continued to rise, subprime loans appeared viable and did not cause significant issues. However, in 2007, housing prices, which had been on an uninterrupted upward trajectory until that point, started to decline. With this turn of events, borrowers started defaulting on their mortgage loans, and it became clear that the banks couldn't recover. The loan amounts by merely selling the houses. The collapse of the housing bubble had severe consequences. Since these high-risk subprime mortgages were bundled and sold as securities, the effects were not limited to the housing market alone. These securities had been distributed throughout the entire financial system. As a result, banks and financial institutions across the globe that had invested in these securities started incurring huge losses. Among these institutions was Lemon Brothers, an investment bank that had invested heavily in these subprime mortgage-backed securities. However, it's important to note that while Lemon Brothers' bankruptcy was a major event, it wasn't the sole cause of the crisis. Many other financial institutions were also severely affected as the housing market collapsed and these securities became worthless. Lemon Brothers found itself on the verge of bankruptcy. They were unable to find a buyer or secure a bailout from the government, which led to the largest bankruptcy filing in the history of the United States. Lemon Brothers' collapse was a turning point in the crisis, triggering panic among investors and leading to a credit freeze where banks became unwilling to lend to each other due to fears of insolvency. This credit freeze further exacerbated the economic downturn, as businesses couldn't secure loans to finance their operations, and consumers couldn't obtain credit to make purchases. As a result, businesses started laying off employees, and consumers cut back their spending, which plunged the economy into a recession. The global financial crisis also highlighted the systemic risks inherent in the global financial system. It also brought to light the role of credit rating agencies, which had promoted subprime mortgage-backed securities as safe investments. Contributing to the buildup of the crisis, the interconnected nature of the financial institutions meant that a failure in one part of the system could quickly spread to others leading to a global crisis. Additionally, the crisis exposed the inadequacy of the regulatory frameworks in place to monitor and manage these risks. The consequences of the crisis were far reaching and lasted long beyond the initial shock. In the aftermath, governments around the world had to intervene to stabilize their economies. They implemented growth-stimulating policies such as reducing interest rates and boosting public spending. However, these measures also led to increased public debt, which continues to be a significant challenge for many countries. The 2008 financial crisis serves as a stark reminder of the potential for systemic risks to cause widespread economic disruption. It underlines the importance of stringent regulatory oversight of financial institutions and markets and the necessity for robust risk management practices. Understanding the series of events 
that led to the crisis can help prevent similar situations in the future. Since the crisis, several changes to financial regulation have been made worldwide, including the implementation of more rigorous stress testing of banks and increased oversight of credit rating agencies. As economies become more interconnected, the lessons learned from this crisis about the potential for systemic risks to spread across borders are more relevant than ever. We must continue to learn from these lessons to build a more resilient global economy that can withstand shocks and protect the financial well-being of all citizens. In summary, the 2008 financial crisis was a global economic crisis ignited by the burst of the United States housing bubble. The wide distribution of subprime mortgages, once considered low-risk loans, coupled with the irresponsible financial practices of investment banks, led to a worldwide economic slowdown. This event serves as a stark reminder of the interconnected nature of our economies and how missteps in one sector can lead to a global crisis Thank you for sticking with us till the end. We look forward to taking you through more such deep dives into the world economy. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more insightful content. Take care and see you in the next video. Goodbye.